I'm super excited to have this conversation with my beautiful guest today, Jenny Halshen, and she's coming on to talk to us about how we can start to shift the way that we think about fitness in our lifestyle. I know that business has always been a big, big mover and driver for me, and fitness has always been one of those things that I want to support my business, and it's been a challenge. So I've asked Jenny to come on, to come and share with us lots of different ways that we can start to change the way that we think about our health and fitness, but also make it fun and make it easy. So welcome to the podcast, Jenny. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. And I love your energy. I have been following you and I met you as part of a mastermind that we were a part of together. And I just love the energy that you bring. And I would love for you to just to get started to share with us a little bit of your background and what it is that you do now. Yeah. So I am a fitness entrepreneur. I am a fitness trainer, instructor, former professional dancer, nutrition coach. I have been in the health and fitness industry for the last 10 years, and it stemmed from my own personal need of wanting to get in shape and wanting to lose weight. When I was um, trying to pursue a career in dancing, I felt like my body was holding me back from booking gigs and competing against 400 other dancers who show up to the same audition, trying to book like two spots in a role. So I turned to fitness to primarily to lose weight and um, get in shape. But what I didn't realize um, is the incredible benefits that you get by committing to a fit lifestyle. It's not just the physical benefits of feeling good in your body and being healthy, but there's so many other benefits that um, fitness brings, such as uh, you know improving your confidence, improving your mental health and your energy, your vitality. Um, it helps you build discipline in your life, and you know discipline is definitely hard to come by. Uh, so it teaches you a lot of different things, and so I want to help other women get fit so that they can live healthy, happy, and confident lives as well. Amazing. And so I love that you shared that because I feel like sometimes it's the headspace that we go into it with. Like if you, if you had gone into it with like, I'm actually going to learn all of these things, would you have explored it sooner? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think yeah. people consider those side, of, those side of the things. Yeah. I think on a superficial level, when people look to fitness, they see it as a means to lose weight or to, to try to get rid of something, right? Whether it's, it's body fat or um, just not feeling good in your body and, and in your skin. And so that's why we create this negative association to fitness because we think that we um, have to lose something mm. uh, during it. We have to lose weight. We have to lose, you know, we, we uh, suffer during the process of working out. Like it's not comfortable. Mm. Um, and so what I try to do is I shift the narrative or I shift the relationship with, um, with movement, with fitness. And I try to help people understand that this is not a way to punish yourself for bad eating habits. It's not a chore. It's not something that you have to do. It's something that you get to do. It's a form of self-care. If you, if you love your body and, and want to perform at your highest level, whether you're in business or uh, you're a stay-at-home mom or whatever, we need to be making sure that we fuel our cup first before we can fill the other cups of other people. And so I think one of the ways we can do that is by prioritizing our health and prioritizing our fitness. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like that's one of the biggest benefits for me, especially when it comes to succeeding in business. If I don't have the energy, like you're not going to be able to succeed. You're not going to be able to show up as your best version of you if you're not energized in some way or if you're not feeling good, right? So I find that that's where that drives me to work towards my healthy eating and energy and, and fitness because it actually gives me the energy to do what I want to do. I was chatting to someone else about it the other day and about how like I work it in to my, to my day because I know when I'm going to need the most or the highest energy and I make sure that I'm working out beforehand to give me that energy which works really well for me. And I think sometimes we have to find a way that it's, it's that shift in mindset, right? Like you're actually going, well, it's not just about weight loss. And I think that we sometimes get sucked into that message because it's just so blasted across right, the health and fitness industry that we forget about all those extra benefits. So I love that you explore that with your clients. It's awesome. 
Yeah, totally. So share with me a little bit more about how then that journey then led you to what it is that you do now. Yeah. Um, you know, I realized back in the day in my early twenties, I really wanted to lose weight because I thought that once I lost the weight, I could then be happy. I could then feel confident. I could, you know, then like get the boyfriend that I wanted. Right. I, was waiting for all of these different kind of emotions to, um, uh, I guess I was waiting for this emotion. And what I realized was when I lost the weight, I still felt really crappy about myself. Even though I thought like losing the weight and becoming, you know, the smallest version of myself was going to make me happy. I still was very insecure. I was still very, um, you know, I just lacked self-esteem. I lacked confidence. And, and so I think that's what people think is, you know, when you hit a certain body size or when you hit a certain size jeans, you can then, you know, go out in the world and be like this confident person. Um, but it doesn't work like that. Mm. And, um, I want to help people, especially women realize, what you want, what you think you want by losing the weight is something that you can have right now. You can have it at your current size, your current state, um, physical state, you can have those feelings now. Um, And so part of, you know, I, I do teach fitness for a living, but entwined, intertwined in my fitness classes is a mental workout as well. I'm trying to teach people that you can cultivate these feelings of joy and confidence and happiness and satisfaction within your body. Now it's, it's, it's simply a choice and we can choose to have those feelings now while we're on the journey. So don't wait for that certain size or the, you know, number on the scale, have it now, have it now. Yes. So good. I absolutely agree. And it works the same in business, right? Like we think that once we achieve a certain result in business, if we choose, if we receive the accolades, if we the, the awards, like what the financial outcome, like whatever it is, we think, well, that's when we'll be happy or that's when I'll feel successful. But actually what you're practicing right now is exactly what's going to happen when you achieve those things. And those things can be very yeah. fleeting. <laughs> exactly. And then once you do hit those goals, those like you know, superficial, like ego driven goals, you just, you become an amplified version of yourself. When you do hit those goals, you're like, heck yes. What I feel inside is now matching what is happening outside. And when you have that alignment, it's incredible. It's the best feeling in the world. Absolutely agree. Alignment is everything. And I feel like it's often people get caught up in that spiral of like, well, I don't have it yet. So I can't feel that way. But I love that you teach that actually enjoy the journey and enjoy you now, because that's how you're going to feel even with the skinny body without, with the strong, with the strength, right? Like, I think it's one of those funny things that we think that it's going to be so different yet. It's not. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So share with me more about how you like to make things fun and how you like to make it simple and easy, because I feel like as a go-getter, I feel like it's one of those things that can feel like a last thing or can sometimes go, well, I'll put that to the wayside because this is more important and whatnot. So I want it to be simple and easy and fun because then I want to actually do it. So how do you cultivate that for your clients? Yeah. So in the very beginning, when um, I was just starting my fitness journey, it was so hard for me to get myself to go to the gym. Um, because again, how I perceived going to the gym was, I thought it was a chore. I thought it was punishment for all of the binge eating I had over the weekend. And so, um, what allowed me or what helped me become more consistent was by finding ways to make working out more enjoyable. And so for me, I grew up as a dancer. I absolutely love to dance. I love good music. And if a really awesome song comes on, I instantly get energy and I want to just move and groove and, and just move my body around. And that's what helped me. So I would gravitate towards classes or instructors 
that had that kind of party vibe, who, who made fitness like feel like a dance party. That, that's how I was able to stay consistent. And so that's what I try to do for other people because again, most of the world believes that exercise is a chore. It's something that you have to do. And so how can I, you know, I ask myself, how can I almost trick people into exercise? And so what I try to do is I combine fun music, a motiv- you know, motivating playlists, fun workout moves, and almost like uh, teach like a dance class or um, you know, something that you, know, you would do at a party. And so I try to kind of incorporate that um, and coupled with my high energy and um, just my crazy <laughs> energy and attitude, um, I definitely try to infuse a party atmosphere into my classes. Um, so I definitely would recommend for anyone um, who does struggle to get their workouts in is to find a workout that you actually enjoy doing. Now, you don't have to actually go into the gym and lift weights if that's not your jam. If you don't like doing that, don't do it. If, if kayaking is your movement of choice, do that. If walking your dog is your movement of choice, do that. There is no right answer when it comes to how to move your body. The most important thing is just move it. Find a way to move it every single day, at least 20 minutes a day get a little bit of resistance training in there. It can be body weight, it can be yoga, it can be Pilates, but doing a mix of getting your heart rate up, getting your cardio and doing some form of resistance training, that's going to be the key and staying consistent with it. Mm, That's the hardest part, (laughs) the consistency. So is there anything you suggest in regards to creating or cultivating that discipline and cultivating that consistency? Yeah. uh, I mean, I would just recommend it's the same thing with business, right? There are things that you have to do in your business that sometimes you just don't want to do, but you have to do it anyways to run your business. It's the same thing with fitness. You're not going to want to feel like it most days, but you have to do it. If you want to be an optimal human being, if you want to be the best CEO of your business, You got to do the things that no one else wants to do because it has to get done. So you have to have that same kind of mentality. Um, How to create that obviously is hard on your own. So you need to have some kind of accountability or support system, whether that means you hiring a trainer or a coach or you investing into like what you were talking about, getting a Peloton bike, putting your money where your mouth is. And um, maybe, you know, getting a group of girlfriends to do this with you. Maybe you create a text support group or you join a Facebook group online. Surround yourself with people who are doing what you want to do because that's going to keep you inspired. So if you keep surrounding yourself with unfit people who value Netflix and chilling more than they do living an active lifestyle, you're going to eventually do the same exact thing. So if you don't want that for your lifestyle, make sure you continue surrounding yourself with people who are active and who do take health um, seriously. Uh, So I would definitely recommend that. And then scheduling it in. So if you're a type A person like myself, I follow my Google calendar to a T. If it's not in there, it's not going to get done. And I think the trick for me, to be honest, is getting the hardest thing done first in the morning. Um, So I definitely try to get my workouts done first thing. Um, it follows the concept of, uh, eat that frog from Brian Tracy. Like if you had to choose what time to eat a frog during the day, would you do it in the morning or would you leave it off for the night? And, um, the best way, the the best way is to eat it right in the morning. So you can just go, you know, go on the rest of your day, not worrying about it. So. Yeah, nice. They're such great tips. And honestly, like you could literally translate exactly across the business, like you said. And it's like, yeah, who you surround yourself with, absolutely. And I love that you said scheduling it in because I actually feel like that's what worked really well for me in the beginning of my business when I recognized that I had put so much of my business first and put my uh, fitness to the wayside and saw the impact that it had on my business when I didn't have the energy and decided that's actually not what I want. And I started just scheduling it into my calendar because you're right, like I'm the same. I literally run my day by my calendar. And 
what happened is I actually found that, say, like a year into it, um, because this is the way our brain works, right? Like if it's an appointment on there, unless you are treating it like a full paying client, you can argue with yourself and you can negotiate and you end up not doing it. So what I actually found was even getting more specific with it as well. So what I found, like, cause I used to like mark a, mark a little space in the calendar that said gym. And so I would then head to the gym or go for a walk or whatever it might be. And I found that like once the discipline was there, once the habit was there with that, what made it more effective down the track and made me commit to it even more was being even more specific with, with what I was going to do with that time. Mm-hmm. So that's what can get us so caught up. We go, we'll mark a spot in your diary that says work on your business. And the brain goes, oh, what does that mean? What am I going to do? Like uh, there's so many things I could be doing in that, which then we go into overwhelm. And I was having the same thing happen with my workout. I had no purpose with it. I was literally just like, oh, I'm going because I said I would go. And it's in my diary. Whereas I find like having much more specifics with it of like what the workout is going to entail, whether it is going to be a fun class, whether it is going to be just a walk or whatever it is, like getting really clear with that. So then it's different throughout the week as well. Um, I found that has worked really well uh, for me in the past. Um, Is there anything else that you would suggest in regards to making sure that it is effective with what it is that you are doing with your time? Yeah. um, Well, just to kind of uh, piggyback off of what you said, I think it's very important that the more clearly outlined your plan is, the more likely it's going to get done, right? If, um, again, if you just say, I want to lose weight, that literally does not tell you what to do. Like, what are you going to do to lose the weight? You got to get super, super specific on an action plan, break it down, chunk it down in bite sized pieces, and then go to work on it. Um, as far as, uh, uh, you know, creating an efficient workout plan, that's up to you and your goals. I mean, everyone has a different goal, whether it's maintain their body size and just kind of change the composition. Maybe they want to build muscle um, or they want to shed down for a wedding. I think it's very important that you understand kind of like the timeline of what of what you want to achieve and when you want to achieve it by, and then figure out basically an action plan and how, and how to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, most often I will say a lot of women gravitate towards just cardio because it is, it's the most, I guess, um, like you see the results, you see the sweat pouring, you see the calories burned on your tracker and you feel like you got a tough workout. But so often I see people run themselves to the ground, literally trying to do more and more cardio to lose weight and get results, but they don't realize the benefits of strength training. So I will recommend for any woman out there who is looking to lose weight, get toned, um, make sure you have some type of strength training routine in there. And again, it doesn't have to be like crazy CrossFit style uh, power lifting type movements. You can do your Pilates or you can do your yoga sculpt class, just making sure that you have some strength training in there. Um, and then for cardio, doing some type of high intensity interval training is going to be way more superior than just kind of logging in minutes on a treadmill or elliptical. So hit and full body strength training is definitely going to be the best use of your time if you are short on time, 30 minutes, that's all you really need. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I feel like you were literally speaking to me six months ago. I was just like getting so bored with it because I was doing the same thing, like cardio day in, day out. And just would be like, "Eh," and wasn't seeing the results. Right. So, and then once I started to inject some of that strength training and it did make a difference and you do realize, like, I think you get, I think you change your what your perspective is on results because you're right. Like it feels different. And I think I also changed my mindset around feeling strong rather than losing weight. And I found such a difference with the way that I felt within my body. Once I injected that into the, into my workout, because I had never felt that level of, of strength and which actually made my cardio so much more effective. I felt like I could actually run further um, I could have more endurance with my with my workouts because I was feeling much stronger within myself. So I feel like often, like as a type A, like at the beginning, it was always like, go, 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 um, hardcore workout, and then would be exhausted and then would find myself 
you know, two or three weeks into a regime and then, and then actually find myself like um, fading from it and then not fully committing to that. And that, like, it's where the consistency went out the window. So I love that you shared that. I feel like that's kind of almost answered an answer, given me an answer for myself about what I could start to do to make my workouts more effective, but also more enjoyable to make them more consistent, which is really good. Yeah. And it's, it's important to make sure that you are recognizing those non-scale victories week after week after week, um, because weight loss is a journey and people think and, and I know most of your, your listeners aren't, you know, they don't necessarily want to lose weight, but most women are always trying to lose weight. So I always talk about that, but our journey towards whatever goal that we have is never linear. You are going to have fluctuations up and down, up and down. This is on the scale and in business and in life. Okay. So it's important to make sure that you are Uh, recognizing and noting all of those non-scale wins, whether it's being able to lift heavier weight, whether it's being able to run a minute longer, whether it's to be able to go up a flight of stairs without getting winded. Those are all moments of progress that we tend to ignore. And we really need to highlight those in our own lives so that we can recognize our progress and realize how far we're really growing. Mm. Oh, I love that. That's, that's such a beautiful analogy for life, right? For anything. I think that's beautifully said. So thank you. I'd love to talk a little bit more about your business journey. So what do you find is the most challenging thing with being in the fitness, health and fitness arena? Oh, gosh. Um, I would say, I mean, right now, the most challenging thing personally is then this goes to body image, but being okay that I'm not like the bikini model type of trainer that so many people are just attracted to, right? I think people still believe that having washboard abs is like the epitome of fitness, but people don't actually realize that having such a low body fat percentage is actually very unhealthy and can sometimes be dangerous, especially for women. I remember trying to get to my smallest size ever and I lost my period. And that's, you know, not a good thing for, for a woman of my age to be losing their menstrual cycle. And so there's so many women who will try to attain a certain image um, to be perceived as worthy of success or um, someone who should be looked up to when you don't have to have that type of body to, to know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Like you can, can, you can change so many people's lives and not have like the, the typical fit body. And I think this is, I mean, it's the perfect time for body positivity to be going around right now where people are now embracing their size and realizing you don't have to fit this certain mold to to be seen as worthy or successful and Mm. so that's something that I have to continue to remind myself that I am good as I am and I can still change so many people's lives even if I'm not 10% body fat (laughs) you know, and I, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole of, of trying to fit this like image that so many people still have in their mind as far as what, what, what it means to be fit. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just more of of this like mental challenge that I'm still um, dealing with. And I think it's also coming back to what's more important to you. Like, I think, and even if you, and I, I feel like this, all of this is correlating to business because it's so funny how it's like, well, what you may think success is, right? And what you see success is on the outside for somebody else, you may think, well, I want, I want that. But then we don't see the behind the scenes. Like someone could have those, those, those six pack of abs and be so unhealthy and actually be freaking miserable, but they're doing that to be perceived in a certain way. It's the same thing with your business. Like, you, could may, you may look at the specific milestones that it hits to be deemed successful, but do you want that? Like, 
Do you want to work in the way that they work? Do you want to have those types of challenges? Do you want to like all of it? And I think that sometimes we can get so caught up in what we're being shown as the milestone or shown as the, as the definition of success, but it's just coming back to what's more important to you, right? So true. And I think it just, this goes to show that we need to define our own version of success. We need to write it down. We need to understand what makes me feel successful. What are, what does my day look like? Uh, what does my business look like? How do I feel? Who am I surrounding myself with? What am I doing every, you know, every waking hour of the day? And and I think we should define it for ourselves and then work to live that. Yeah. Yeah. And even with our bodies, right? Like I find like the most happiest I've ever been in my body when I felt strong and I had that endurance. So like when you were saying before about how like being able to walk up a flight of stairs and not get puffed, like there were moments like that literally brought me back to different moments where I felt like I could present for a full day and I had all the energy in the world and I didn't feel so drained at the end. Like that was my version of success and I felt good and comfortable within my clothes and I felt confident enough to be able to breathe well like there's so many elements to the fitness side that we don't necessarily consider but honestly like I feel like that was when I was the most happiest and I want to get back to that because I feel like I've, I've let that go a little bit and I feel like once we're back to that space of that endurance that um I guess it's, you would put it in a different way right like it's not endurance it's 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 literally a level of fitness, right? Like being able to have that ability to have the energy and the breath to be able to do those longer form presentations or walking up those flight of stairs. Is that what you would call it? Level of fitness? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Endurance for sure. Yeah. Amazing. So I'd love to know, tell me a little bit more about JFF on demand. What's this all about? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So that is my um, virtual on demand platform where you can subscribe on a monthly basis and get access to all of my workouts. They're all pre recorded. And I have four week plans in there. Um, I have HIT style cardio, dancing, yoga, Pilates, strength training. Every class you can do at home at your own time. And I lay out an exact plan for you. So just like you were saying, you know, you're not sure what to do when you go to the gym. I've trainer designed every single workout so that you can feel confident knowing that you're going to get a fully full body, comprehensive head to toe workout. No muscle group is going to be missed. And you can just kind of um, allow that stress to escape your mind and just push play and, and do the workout. Oh, that sounds so good. I definitely have to check this out and find out a little bit more about that because I just want to do, I want to do your dance classes. Like I feel like that seems really fun and I feel like that's something that I could totally get behind. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's so much fun. If it, and especially if you hate like traditional cardio, you're going to love dancing. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Tell us a little bit more about your business journey. So what's something that you've learned about yourself along this business journey? Um, that I create my own ceiling in business. And so if I want to make a certain amount of income or make a certain amount of impact, I just have to raise my own standards mm. and, um, and literally there is nothing off limits. If, if I want to do it, even if it seems impossible, I can do it. You just have to set your mind to it. So I think for me, entrepreneurship has been so such a mental um, journey um, and just realizing that that we limit ourselves so much and we doubt ourselves so much. But there's so many opportunities out there. And if you're just willing to become resourceful and put your head in the game and learn and be a sponge and make mistakes and fail along the way, you're going to see incredible growth. Yeah, massively. So would you be open to sharing a, an element of it or an experience of failure that you feel has grown you? I feel like the last eight years have been like failure upon failure upon <laughs> failure. <laughs> and that is why I'm successful today. Yeah. Um, I started my online business in like 2012. It was a side hustle. I was trying to uh, promote my network marketing business. And gosh, I just struggled so hard to gain any type of traction. 
I eventually paused it. I stopped, took a break for about a year, started working my typical like personal training job wasn't really doing much with social media or my online business because I was about ready to give up. I didn't want to do it anymore. I was tired of not seeing the results that I wanted. And then during the pandemic, when I lost my job because all gyms closed, I re-looked at my online business because I had nothing else to do at the time, had no money coming in, and TikTok was getting huge at the time. I had no idea how to use the dang app, but I decided to go all in on it. I was like, let's just have fun and see where this goes. And so I'm dancing, being silly with all the songs and the trends and all that. And I was just having a good time and started posting pretty um, crazily five times a day. Did not stop for about eight months or so. And I went from zero followers to now over 800,000 followers. It blew my business up. It, it definitely got me on the map in the fitness industry. And so now I'm here today, literally from unemployed during the pandemic to now um, having over a six-figure income as a fitness entrepreneur. It's, it's absolutely mind-blowing. And I, would, I can have to credit my past eight years of failing over and over that got me here. And I think it's just a true testament of just patience and following a dream that continues to, you know, seep into your mind and just never giving up. Mm. Yeah. Love it. So good. So I'd love to know what advice would you give? Let's say there's other personal trainers, say, listening to this going, you know, I'm I'm feeling where you were, right? I'm burning out. I'm literally like, I don't know. I want to give up. Like what advice would you give them in order to scale their business or, you know, challenge themselves in new ways to grow their business? I really think a lot of my success comes from who I've been able to connect with and who I know, my social circle. And so I think we are so close to finding the right people. We just have to become more resourceful. Like I think we know all of the people we need to know in order to create the business that we want. So I think we need to tap into our networks and we need to tap into, you know, the, the people who are just beyond our reach and be willing to put yourself out there and gain those connections and being those relationships and um just honestly you have to make sure that you keep your mental game very very strong you will get broken down there will be moments where you just want to put everything you know uh throw throw the towel away um but if if this is truly a dream that is planted in your in your head you got to pursue it you have to pursue it because I think the greatest re- regret is, is never trying. Right. And the greatest failure is never trying at all. So um, just never give up, keep going, keep going, keep going. Love it. And I love that you challenged yourself by pushing yourself outside your comfort zone to do TikTok. Like I'm sure that everyone listened to this going, Oh my God, I don't know if I could do that, <laughs> but you did that and you challenged yourself and you were really consistent, which is amazing. Do you find like that's also supported your growth? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I found that TikTok was one of the best ways for me to show my true personality because TikTok kind of removes the mask of being perfectly curated and filtered. Mm -hmm. Um, It shows the real you and it allows you to be a little bit more on the goofy side than maybe, you know, posting on Facebook and Instagram. So, um, I thought TikTok was an amazing platform for my personality to really just let that shine through. And yeah, being consistent is definitely the, the biggest indicator of success, in my opinion. It's not about the, the one post that goes viral that makes your business. And it's not the one stint of a four-week diet plan, for example, that helps you lose the weight. It's consistently doing the actions daily eating your vegetables, drinking your water, you know, posting on social media. It's the boring things that create 
long-term success. It's not the big like viral video that, you know, makes or breaks your career. Yeah. I mean, you say boring, but some of it's not that boring. Like you can have fun with creating content and doing TikToks aren't actually that boring. (laughs) Totally. It's super fun. And it makes you, it definitely makes you step outside of your comfort zone. If you're more of an introvert and you're shy and yeah, but um, it's one of those ways to, to just say F it. Yeah. Let's just do it. Let's see what happens. And if, if it bonks, then you can just delete it. Yeah. No <laughs> Love it. So good. And I know that you've spoken about as well before I've heard you speak about the difference of having multiple income streams as well within your business. How was that? How have you gone about doing that? Yeah. So I have, um, I, I do a bunch of different, uh, things. I have like over nine streams of income. Wow. Um, coming uh i get income from brand collaborations sponsorships i do my subscriptions i have digital products and programs i do one-on-one coaching i do some freelance gigs here and there so there's a bunch of different things that i do and i love it because you know if one income stream starts to die down you can tap into another income stream and it just gives you that sense of security that you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket. And I learned the hard way by putting all my eggs in one basket. When I was a trainer and instructor at a gym, I lost that completely. My income went, you know, to zero. And so I had no other avenues or channels to tap into. So I learned the hard way and, um, I'm going to continue to have multiple streams of income just for that mental peace of mind, Mm -hmm. but to also, you know, tap into the streams of income that are doing really well and really leveraging those. And then having, you know, the, the different side hustles to support you in your growth. Awesome. And so is there anything that you would say or add to that with regards to how to choose the right income stream for you? I think um, it's super important to definitely experiment, try different things. I think every entrepreneur needs to try something at least once, whether it's affiliate marketing or creating a digital product or, you know, doing drop shipping. I don't know what your audience does, but try it. If you are compelled to do it, let's do it. See if it works. And I think you should find the income stream that gives you a few things. Number one, you have to enjoy it. You have to love what you're doing. If it's one-on-one coaching, do one-on-one coaching. Um, But then also you need to make sure that that income stream can also become scalable. Um, So if you are trading your time for money, eventually you're going to get tapped out with one-on-one coaching, right? So are there different ways that you can sell your services and sell, sell your knowledge without having to t- uh, trade time for money? So maybe that's packaging your one-on-one coaching into a course. So figuring out all of those different ways to, to leverage your knowledge and your services, um, that will be very beneficial for you. Awesome. Awesome. And so tell me about the next 10 years. What's, what's it going to look like for you for your next 10 years? Hmm. I am going to be known as Jenny J fitness, the worldwide fitness superstar. Um, (laughs) and I say it kind of jokingly, but it's so completely true. It's on my whiteboard. I see it every single morning. I remind myself of my goals. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to be in millions and millions of people's living rooms, teaching them my workouts and, just changing so many people's lives, um, not only physically, but mentally. And um, I hope, I hope to continue on that path. Yeah, I know you will. I know you will. Amazing. So I'm going to ask one last little question. What's, what's, what piece of advice would you give someone who wanted to take their life to the next level? Who wants to take their life to the next level? Is that what you said? I would say, commit to be a lifelong learner and student, continue to grow, continue to invest in your, in yourself, in all ways. Um, You are your greatest investment. So make sure that you are prioritizing you and your growth 
and um, never, never, um, never give up, stay committed on that path. And um, yeah, I, I think that's it. <laughs> Amazing, Jenny. Thank you so much for sharing your incredible wisdom with us today and all the tips and tricks. It's been amazing. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure.